episode 16. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Red Pill Tamales. I know a lot of people think it's just conspiracy talk. Like sometimes I have conversations with the youngster, Joseph. He's yeah. in there, he's like in his early 20s. I'll be telling him about the Kiki Camarena story. I was like, bro, this cat was DEA. And I'm like, he got kidnapped, tortured. And who you think was all involved? And I start telling him, I'm like, the CIA. He's like, what? I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, the American government was selling dope along with the Mexican government. We're in cahoots with the DEA, the cartels, and the CIA. And it was to, to help fight communism. So I'm not 100% mad at him. And I'm telling him this, and he's just like, you just see the cognitive dissonance. <laughs> it's like... I walk in just now. I'm, I'm just to yeah. use the restroom, and you're tell, I, all I hear is, and all the intelligence agencies. And he, I just look over, and Joseph just like, <laughs> like deer in the headlights. Yeah, he's like a kid in a corner. And I'm like, <laughs> Listen up, punk. Yo, it's episode 16. Uh, we appreciate all you guys tuning in. Thank you for um, really making this the highlight of our day. I'm yeah, for I'm, sure. an, I'm not a mind reader, but I'm speaking for Rob when I say. This is the best part of my day, and it's probably the best part of his yep. day. It's probably more than likely many people, many people say. Hell yeah. This is the best part of their day. And we're enjoying some Black Rifle Coffee Company. Shout out. Salute. You see the swag, bro. I, I like it. Come on now. Drip. Don't slip on the drip. That's right. People might see the studio has been rearranged. We're going to add a, a second camera here in the next episode or two. You'll be able to reveal. It's a <laughs> yeah. big reveal. Episode 17. You'll be able to see Rock. I feel like it's going to be a letdown. They'll be like, man, this guy doesn't look the way he sounds. Like, they were like, man, Chingo's trying to get his beard like Rob's, but he got a <laughs> long way to go. So shout out to all the patrons. This podcast, you know, we have free speech still all the way through and through. Thanks to the patrons because we're 100% listener funded. Um, we're almost at a hundred patrons. If you want to join the squad, we don't have a name for the crew yet. You know, it's a the game. Tamale squad. Something. It's a game without a name right now. Yeah, tamale, something. Uh, the Tamale Intelligence Agency, the Ooh. TIA. I don't Ooh. know. <laughs> That's pretty good. The TIA, uh, you know, the committee, even though people said they switched me, the Rasa drafted me in a race draft for Shia LaBeouf. So they saying Shia LaBeouf took my spot. So now I'm I'm the coconut. I'm over here with the... <sighs> that weirdo. Yeah, I, I've actually seen some people like I will trade a Chingo Blink for for Beto, and I was like Beto's already like I don't know that doesn't work that way if he's yeah. already supposedly Latin, right? Pff, I don't know what they say he. I think he's just. But you can't trade another Mexican for a Mexican if he really is Mexican. But he doesn't say he's Mexican. Yeah, but I mean, come on. Just the name. Come he's on. Trying. Rob thinks he's trying to be Mexican. He knows what he's doing. He know what kind of vote he's trying to get. Yep. But uh, there's a lot going on, um, even though Trump is uh, arguably on the way out. Um, the news is still trying to make sure they can get some little clickbait headlines, some little hoaxes, use words like caught on tape, leaked, you know, pressured. He was pressured. He yeah. was pressuring. They're calling it the intimidation call. Bro, we're going to get to that in a minute because people were trying to call me out on Twitter like, aha. What do you have? Haven't heard you give your take on this smoking gun caught, leaked audio, pressure, intimidation, my boss, dictator, authoritarian. And I'm like, give me a second. Send me a link. <laughs> Let me watch it. Because off top, I already see the uh, persuasion words, you know, caught on tape. Like if I if I told you right now, Rob was caught on tape. It's like. Okay, caught. What do you mean, caught on tape? Well, well, he went live on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what to who? What's <laughs> going on? But uh, we get we we got to tease him, man. We'll come back to that subject in a minute. Uh, also, the Georgia is it a runoff? It is the runoff election. That's today. So we're recording this January fifth. It's gonna drop mañana on the sixth when we should know who wins and basically decides who who operates the chamber of the Senate. And the polls close in two hours from now. So are you for the Republicans running in this Georgia Senate? I am for the main fact that it's got a lot to do with the balance of power. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not even necessarily maybe the people's individual policies as of, you know, what it is for Georgians, as they call themselves. But it is for... The, we, we know that Pelosi got reelected House as, you know, Speaker of the House. They control the House. And now if they, they take over the uh, Senate with Biden also supposedly coming in, there is no balance of power there. And it's it's something that could really shake up the country. Especially if some would argue they're kind of leaning towards, you know, 
far left yeah. communism and really in cahoots with a foreign government that doesn't like us very well. Yeah, and I didn't want much. to bring up the gun thing because that is a big part of it, right? If that mm-hmm. if that happens, they could you know have some gun reform or whatever because people immediately like to go to. They've always said they want to take our guns. Yeah. They've never taken our guns. Yeah. It's like well, no one says they're literally physically taking them from you day one, but it's a, it's a slow process, yeah. right? They could go in that direction further, harder by having all three, you know, parts of of, of government run by the Democrats. Hmm. So yeah, let's throw that argument in there. Um, maybe I should post repost that uh the clip we made for Georgia. Oh, and yeah. just be like, I hope, hey Georgia, I hope y'all voted. You know, <laughs> well, fucking Project Veritas. You know, they've been leaking. They had two two months worth of people in the field in Georgia. Have you seen? Have you heard any of Was them? Was it the person going door to door, and they were saying they used an address? Yeah, they had one address where they had thousands of people registered to. It's like two hundred one Washington. Yes, Ave. and then they had another one where uh, I think it was a, a, a campaign manager, somebody in. Um, and Reverend Warnock's camp where he's, you know, about defunding the police and blah, 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 but doesn't really vocally say that because, you know, I might want to, might not want people to vote for me kind of thing. And it's just more like the CNN tapes. Like he got some real dirt that's like, re- they're releasing it right now as we speak, like seven minutes ago, they released another video. And it's, it's like, will people see it in time? Or are they just going to vote and it's going to be a repeat of like, had I known that, I wouldn't have voted for him. Man, there's a mosquito flying around you. Yeah. So beware. Oh, okay. There's it's right by your leg now. Watch out. Oh, I see it. Oh, got it. Yes. Yeah, see? Don't mess with Texas. Sass. Teamwork. You know, there you go. That was a big ass mosquito. That, that was a surgical strike. It was. Mr. Miyagi style. There you go. Sass. Cobra Kai. <laughs> Call back to episode 15 if you didn't hear it on the Patreon exclusive. There you go. All the patrons know what I'm talking about. That's right. But um, yeah, that that's interesting. You know, I guess the founding fathers set us up with the constitution to where there would be checks and balances and balance of power because the last thing you want is for an extreme regime in a country to where they're able to manipulate like oh i control the military <laughs> i guess i'm not leaving you know what i mean like yeah. you know the shit like that you see it happen in, in other countries and god willing that'll never happen here yeah but we're just seeing a lot of um you know y'all might think there's some tin foil type of shit but we're seeing more and more like people like politicians hanging out, sleeping with, chilling in cahoots with Chinese spies. You know, we see like Chinese telecom companies posting up all over the place when really they're just an arm of their military because any corporation out of China works with the main government. The government is the military. Right. So if we're allowing these companies on our stock exchange and they're not being transparent and they're not really playing to our rules, it's like, come on, y'all. You know what I mean? Chingo warned y'all. We yeah. Keep, we keep, like, I know everybody, some people listening are making the Joseph face right now. It's like, <laughs> Chingo, come on. Really? It's mostly the people that see the clips on Instagram and they're, they're either going to make that face and go away or leave a shitty comment or they're going to make that face and then actually maybe lick that red pill you know like maybe take a dive into the podcast feed. just lick the tip of the red pill just y'all. the tip of it you know just, just a little, little bit just let it dissolve yeah. a little bit on the tip of your tongue get some of that pork in your mouth <laughs> wow <laughs> so i have uh some of that szechuan pork i have um a lot of clips that i would love to post like there's one i know i already posted the compilation of Joe Biden just like, China's our friend. We need to be nice to China. China's not a competitor. Come on, man. We need to help China. Help China rise up. Right. I know my phone's tripping. It's like, damn, son, how many times you (laughs) you gonna say the C word? But I played that one. But there's so many more. But I really do. uh, Some people think, Mm -hmm. some people think that I really don't want discourse and discussion. I'm really just trying to parrot as they say uh right wing conspiracies and disinformation Mm -hmm. and i'm full of it and somebody the republicans are paying me you know this is what they think right that i'm a sellout somebody's paying me to spread this disinformation and uh what you know what i'm saying so they're just kind of like come on man you don't want discussion you just want to just take one side and you never gonna say nothing bad about trump it's like okay, well, we're going to find out in a minute the good and the bad of this hour-long phone call that the media is trying to make it seem like he's a mob boss, he's bullying people. But really, have you heard it? I didn't didn't hear it all. Okay, well, all you got to hear is the first nine minutes, and you can already tell. It starts off with like, 
All right, Mr. President, we have uh, we have John da, 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 Smith from the department. We have uh, da, 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 also two other individuals, da, da, myself. All right, so, um, okay, go ahead, begin with your list of grievances. Mm -hmm. So now he's complaining. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time. I appreciate you guys taking the call. Um, you know, there's some things going on. And he's complaining. He's like, many people say there's there were some dead people, you know, might want to look into that. I don't know. So it, it was like he was at a customer service counter. Yeah. Like, and, you know, also, um, I, I have a confirmation number. <laughs> you know, the, the bill came to my house in November, but I sent it on the 15th. Maybe mail was slow. You know, like, you have yeah. you'd be at the DMV. For sure. And you're like, uh, I received this thing at my house. And they're just like, mm. Mm. these are people from his own party. that are like, uh, well, mm, I don't know, man. And he's like, well, many people say that they show up to vote. And... They, it says they already voted. What's up with that? And they're just like, mm, I don't know, bro. Sorry, too late. Mm -hmm. and he's like, and he's just, okay, um, almost like you're stepping up to, like, your honor. Like right. you're at the judge or the DMV or Walmart customer service. It's like, but the device did not come with batteries and it said it was supposed to, you know. And that's all it was. It was Trump being a Karen with a whole bunch of examples of stuff that, Honestly, most of it, maybe he should have just focused on the stronger ones. Sure. If, it, if that's my critique, my critique is DT. I don't know who you got all in your in your crew right now. I don't know who's in your squad, but they should probably. They caught him slipping with this phone call, hmm. right? How presidential did he look when he dropped that video with all at, at about it? Um, I don't know what room in the White House when he's talking about the American public need their two G's, not that fucking punk ass 600. <laughs> Get that 600 out of here. They need 2K. That video was like, yeah. okay, brother. All right. That's why we ride with, that's why we voted for you, draw. You standing up for the people. You're tired of us getting fucked over and these punk ass politicians selling us out. Mm -hmm. And you're basically calling them out saying, Congress is despicable, you know. I waited and Nancy Pelosi kept blocking and give my people 2K. That video was great. Now, when you're on a fucking conference call, customer service, and you're going through a list of stuff that may or may not, I don't know, hard to prove. Yeah, that could be cheating. But was it big cheating? Like 400,000 votes cheating to really make a difference? And he's just going through it like, eh, eh, eh. and what does CNN and everybody do? They basically say it's the biggest scandal of scandals. It's worse than Watergate. And it's like, did you hear the fucking tape? I know nobody's going to sit there for an hour. Hell, it's our job. And we ain't listened to the whole hour. There's so many things going on. Yeah, it's Rob and I. I mean, this is what we do. And yeah. we didn't even sit for the entire hour. So if someone's already biased to believe the mainstream media, if someone already has TDS, Trump derangement syndrome, and they're already biased there's a thing called, um, I think it's confirmation bias, yeah. which is like, I already voted for Biden. So the last thing I want my brain to do is to fucking short circuit and rewire after the fact. And now I'm not, oh, not confirmation, but I'm, I'm talking about um, the need to be consistent. Mm. I'll give you an example. When, when you have two horses out on, on a racetrack, you might be like, ah, I don't know, man. It's kind of 50-50 between the two. I mean, I really don't. I don't know. I'm going to vote on the brown horse. Boom. Once you vote on the brown horse, the need to be consistent kicks in. So now you, man, I'm really feeling good about, I feel 30% better than I did before about the brown horse. I mean, look at his calves, bro. You see, <laughs> when he was warming up, he was confident. I know I'm a win. So that type of bias kicks in. When you already voted for Biden, you already put your money on that horse. Anything we tell you right now is going to be really hard for you to see. That's just because of the way human beings are wired. Reality is subjective. We all kind of look at the world through our own lens. If you would have asked me to look at this story a year ago, I probably would have been like, yeah, man. It sounds, yeah, find 11,000 votes. What the fuck do you mean? Help me find. What do you mean find? What a hilarious, like everybody uses that. Like <laughs> when you take it out of context, yeah, that's what, what it's missing. The entire, every clip that you've seen is missing context. That's part of their hoax. Of course. This is, it's the anatomy. Of, same thing they did to me. Right. Same shit they did to me. Chingo Bling denounces La Raza. And no matter what, bro, 
People saw them little clips and they didn't see the rest. They don't know how to look at fake news. So a lot of people buy it. They're like, ah, Republican means white. Chingo Bling wants to be white. And he has turned his back on his raza. So now anytime I see him eating menudo, I just think he's making fun of us. What's funny is that now, when those clips were made and these people were trying to, you know, I don't know, grow their fucking channels or whatever. Go they, ahead. They took the bait and they promoted me. 100%. They did. And now, <coughs> excuse me, when you pull, yeah, pull you up or Red Tamales or podcast, Jingle Bling, whatever, there's, there's still one in the middle of like now a, a sea of clips where people, if they really wanted to, could maybe listen to the one that's like the announces the or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's a sea of all the ones that would give them better context like, about what yeah. that clip was talking about. Yeah. So basically... All the clips we're putting out are going to flood out. Yeah, they've already flooded all but like one. Flood out the, the narrative. Yeah. The yeah. one missing context. Exactly. So going back to this idea that Chingo Bling doesn't want discussion. He just wants to force Trump and the Republicans down our throat. No. What I, what I aim to gain, one of the things, is us discuss... how I'm a nerd about mass communication. I have a minor in some shit like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. The, I, I paid for the college, but I don't remember the name of the minor. It was like mass communicate, mass media. Mm -hmm. I needed that minor to be able to have my radio show every Sunday night. That's the only reason I went to the communications department for a minor. Well, they taught us how to look at, um, you know, slogans, campaigns, and, and it's basically brainwashing, right? You're trying to persuade people to, like I did the uh, the campaign of the Army of One, so I was looking at how it was how the Army and the U.S. government was using. Why did they come up with the slogan "The Army of One"? In the pamphlets, the reasoning was a lot of kids at that time felt like I'm an individual. I don't want to just be a copy like of this big big army. I'm an individual, so they came up with you are the army of one. You're you. You're an individual. But you're part of this army of one. So it's one and you're one and you can yeah. still be you, but I need you to sign up. So I'm a nerd about persuasion and, and, and uh, branding and communication and uh, mass media and, you know, uh, how to mainstream news literally try to make a story out of this. Mm -hmm. They took this hour long thing. First of all, they call it leaked audio, um, caught on tape. So from the jump you're already have they're forcing you to see past the cell it no longer becomes what is it it's why did he get what did he get caught doing yeah and then they hit you with the caught on tape then they use words like uh pressured the georgia whoever pressured it's like no he's whining and complaining and being a karen and saying his list of grievances and he's not I, you know what i'm saying it's a conference call like he probably knows he's being recorded Going back to the slogans, I remember, and this is before uh, Biden's using, I think, is he using Build Back Better? Wh yeah. Which I know is from a previous something. So he's using his plagiarism yet again to, to re, re... Well, technically, Make America Great Again was plagiarized. Right. Was borrowed I'm, as right. well. The, 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 the comparison I was going to make was, uh, you had like, what was Hillary's? Uh, I'm with her. Yeah, bad. And then you had Hope and Change, right? Was Obama for, for fucking yeah. eight years? So I remember he, reading on slogans a couple of years ago and uh, political slogans for them, for Obama and Hillary, there was nothing uh, new. Like, like people couldn't see a destination for where they wanted to take the country. And then here came Trump where he like reimagined Make America Great Again. And they had a destination to go to, like Make America Great Again, like where we're going to strive to get to this place. And then now you have Build Back Better, which is, I guess, kind of a destination, but it's just, I don't know, it was weird to go from I'm with her and hope and change, which is kind of like vague. It's not really like we're not going anywhere. We're just maybe going to pander to a few people and maybe change some things to make America great again. Well, think about the words build back better. Mm -hmm. So back, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, can I raise my hand on this one? Like <laughs> people want to move forward, but you're saying back. And then like the, for example, the I'm with her, uh, there's this really good book. It's called Win Bigly. It's by uh, Scott Adams. Bro, I have it in my closet. You, I forgot you gave it to me. Yeah. Or you mean you let me borrow it? I never oh, no, started it. Yeah. yeah it's all you. I, you explain it because I, I was I read the back of it. I, I gave another one to Midnight. So it's really a book about persuasion using Donald Trump 
as a case study. Mm -hmm. So he's basically just going through. This is a dude that predicted Trump was going to win the first time in 2016. Right. And um, so I'm like, how the fuck did this dude guess that shit? How did he, what did he see that no one else saw? Because all the experts, all the political pundits, all the fucking news, Hillary, the posters, everybody thought Hillary had it in a the bag. They're like, come on. All the women are going to vote for her. All the minorities are going to vote for her. There's no, all the white liberals are going to vote for her. How the fuck did she lose? And right. she still can't accept it. That's why she's saying Russia, 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 even though she was the one having meetings with Russia, 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 Russia. Um, well, he breaks down her slogan saying like, I forget what his critique was about I'm with her, but I think maybe because it excluded males, it was just so like, it's 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 history it's a female don't worry about her policies don't worry about what she's gonna do don't worry about benghazi don't worry about emails don't worry about corruption don't worry about nothing don't worry about epstein don't worry about nothing just you should be pro minority pro female and the other guys are racist and i'm with her and it's like uh it sounds cool but people didn't buy it yeah motherfuckers didn't really like her no and a lot of people don't really like kamala or joe <laughs> there's a another a story that i was starting to pick up yesterday where she was uh she had said a story about when she was little and you know she was oh. on the stroller the, it was basically like, like an mlk freedom, story freedom. yes 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 yes. did you read that that little excerpt man i heard about it bro god damn <laughs> May okay so this is what i heard martin luther king did an interview i believe it was like playboy magazine or some shit like that and he told a story where there was a little there was a little girl or a child or somebody at a at a thing and and they asked the baby like you know why are you here you're so young do you understand the significance and it's like freedom and it's like you see the moral of the story is a child can be so young that they can't even say the word right but they innately know that they must have it oh. Freedom. Slow clap, everybody in the crowd. And I agree, because Martin Luther King, he said it first, those were his words, and it was a beautiful story then. Yeah. Kamala maybe had like a lapse in memory, maybe she reimagined history, somehow she placed herself in the story, right? Either she stole the story, or she had a very similar background with her Indian family. That was her fact, to her, <laughs> that was her fact. So she basically said, I was a little girl. Yeah. At the rallies and the protests and the this and the that, even though she grew up Indian and Jamaican. And somebody asked me, wow, little girl, what you doing here? You're so little. Uh, freedom. <laughs> freedom. But yeah, she they, put the W. They in. did. They did. They put FW and uh, MLK's was just, I think, Feedem. F-E-E-D-O-M. That, that kind of uh, this is kind of a non sequitur, but I wanted to bring it up at the top of the show because, uh, yeah, um, the a man, a woman thing. Did you see that clip? Uh, yeah. I, it was really short where they who was it congress what were they yeah doing? it was yeah it was uh at the beginning of one of the sessions here recently a couple days ago and what prayer or what what a it was just like the opening prayer i guess i actually have uh ben shapiro's uh breakdown of it real quick because i wanted you i wanted us to hear it i hope i have the audio set up after money souls podcast let me see if it's gonna play um because he as he said is we ask it yes. in the name of the monotheistic god brahma and god known by many names by many different faiths, a man and a woman. So just to be straight, this human said, a men and a women. And now, as the designated Jew in your political life, let me just remind you as a, as a Hebrew speaker, the word amen is not an English word. It comes from the Hebrew word, amen, which you say after prayers, which can originally be traced etymologically speaking to the word emet, which means truth. The idea of amen is solidarity. Right, may it be so, or it's true. Right, that's what amen means. Okay, it was then brought into Greek and Latin and then passed along to English. The word amen has literally nothing to do with gender. It does not mean a man. It means amen. In other words, it is a sign. It's like hallelujah, right? It's a sign of solidarity, right? That's, that's what it is. It's an exclamation. It's like, it's like facts. And yet somehow yeah. leftists have decided that the term Amen, because it is spelled A-M-E-N and includes the word men, somehow is gendered language. And so we are also supposed to say after prayers, a women. So a few things. <sighs> Number one, not only is that radically stupid 
on an etymological level. I mean, you would have to take the word amen, take it down to the pit of despair from the princess bride, put the torture machine on it and torture it until it tosses out some sort of gendered variant. Not only is that stupid on that level, it would also then be meaningless. Why would you end a prayer, any prayer, and then just say, man? Like, what? that doesn't make any sense at all. It's idiotic. Beyond that, it's doubly idiotic because it turns out that people on the left don't actually believe that men and women are real concepts, right? Funny. They're malleable, men and women. So what they really should say, just to be tolerant, is not a men and a women. They should say a men, a women, and a gender is a social construct that is unconnected to biological sex, but also a biological imperative. <laughs> Boom. Uh, come on, that's the kind of shit. And that's why I enjoy this kind of discourse and conversation because there are a lot of things that we've talked about in the past and we'll talk about later that's like grand scale, global, you know, worldview. But there's also these social constructs that are going on just within our country, in our communities, in our states that are just not talked about enough, I think. Like, we got to shine some light on that stupidity as well. I agree a thousand percent. For example, Ben Shapiro said, these leftists... Yada, 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 right? Sound like the Megan the Stallion. Said, yada, 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 yada. So he didn't say these liberals. He didn't say these Democrats. He said these leftists. And for example, a lot of people listening to this might consider themselves liberal, which, which is different from leftists. Uh, from my understanding, liberals are pro-capitalism, you know, pro-constitution or whatever, whatever, right? Good, important things. It's the leftists that have other agendas and they have mixed in and hidden with the cloak of liberalism. Right. So I'm still wrapping my brain around that. Uh, then you also have like globalists versus nationalists. That's some whole other shit. But um, I guess the way Ben Shapiro was breaking it down, he was assuming that they added the a woman thing at the end. Because they were trying to say that, oh, a man means a man. Right. I don't know what the fuck. You yeah. know, so he, I guess he was saying, if this is what they think, let me tell you why it's stupid. It sounds like they just wanted to be, again, more inclusive. Is that what the... That's what it sounded like to me when I first heard it. I mean, I, I the way I interpreted it at first was they were trying to take God out of it. That's how ah, I saw it. Okay. The way I saw it was they're almost making a mockery of the prayer. And throwing in a little wink at the end to it's like when you make a promise, but then you had your fingers crossed behind your back. Right. It's like they read the prayer and then they were like, hey, man, and a woman kind of like and psych and psych. Gotcha, and bitch. Basically, because it's like, why would you end a prayer like that? Like, that's not I've never heard. Don't nobody pray like that. What church? No. <laughs> so it was almost like, oh, you just basically. Letting it be known. Imagine hearing this shit going forward. Uh, now you're going to see clips where like certain super progressive churches that want to be super inclusive are going to start saying shit like this. Man, Rob, you might have, <laughs> you might be Nostradamus. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong too. Because I don't even attend these services. But if I was a diehard at a church and then all of a sudden it starts to become this like really progressive, you know, community and organization that's just kind of trying to appease you know like big government or these really really um what's the word extremist yes that really then it's like your whole life in this congregation has been a fucking lie well what rob just said i think is the reason is one of the reasons this podcast has value to people now i'm telling you it's valuable you know i'm letting yeah. it be known because it is a discussion rob just made a prediction this is how I, I would like for my people to start thinking, which is, huh, I notice something. I'm going to pay attention to it. Let me maybe gather my own thoughts about it and maybe just kind of keep an eye on where it goes. So if God, church, um, you know, I guess prayer, religion, if any of that's important to you, maybe you might want to keep an eye on what exactly are these politicians into? Why are they? Is it because they're trying to be overly inclusive and making it a gender thing, or are they trying to take God out of it? They trying to make a mockery. Like, where is this going? And you just made a prediction. And uh, these days, man, there's no telling. There's no telling where it, because the way social engineering works is sounds like your prediction, which yeah. is what if 
it becomes a trend. Mm -hmm. What if other super inclusive progressive uh, churches and stuff want to start ending the prayer like that? What do y'all think? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question for people to that's comment a on. Great question. It it, <clears throat> it goes against what I mean. What again? Men's Pure broke it down. Uh, we don't. I don't need to make any more explanations of it. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not yeah. a part of any kind of scripture, or yeah. there's no meaning to it in history. It, it's not a biblical term of any sense. Like, are you trying to be, is it, sir? Are, is he trying to be cute? Is he trying to be funny? Yeah. What is, what is it? Like, like, like knowing that amen is like, you know, I agree. You can look up the definition. It's got a hundred different things. It's just, I agree, yes, concur, all that kind of stuff. A hey, woman, like, what was, I would love to know what the representative's uh, mission was with saying a woman at the end of it. Yeah, and if he came up with that shit on his own, or if it's just the beginning right. of an onslaught of double speak, double think, um, postmodernism, which is something we touched upon a few episodes back, which is basically... Um, yeah, what is prayer? What is amen? Is that the only meaning? Is that the only meaning it could mean? Could I interpret it this way? Could I add a woman at the end? Right. And, you know, <laughs> there's no fucking telling, man. You can't help but laugh at some of this shit, honestly. Yeah, and, and it probably is some leftist shit. So obviously some people have progressive values or they might see themselves as liberal, but leftists, if that's really what they're doing, yeah, that's some leftist shit. If they're either trying to take God out of it or they're trying to fucking um, really just pin men versus women. Like they're trying to highlight division. So Set. a few years ago when I wasn't really, you know, very, I don't know, politically active as far as <clears throat> consuming the, the news or stories or journalists or whatever, I would have just interpreted the, the term and maybe you, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on this progressive or Let's just use progressive. It always, like maybe in my early 20s, when I was oblivious to shit, right, that that was like a term that people wanted to take their community or the world into a very progressive direction where they're raising everybody, all, you know, lift all shields at the same time, all ships at the same time, and everyone's living a better life for them, for one another and among each other. But it really isn't that. It's like a really extreme, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of the people that I hear say that are very like, Let's eliminate cops. Let's, you know, do all these kind of really extreme, crazy things. And I'm like, huh, I feel like that word was commandeered, you know, a long time ago to mean something different from what it originally was. I don't know. Well, a lot of times stuff has a fly ass name like progress. It sounds like it's right. Progress. Exactly. Who doesn't like progress? Yes. Progressive, meaning it's the new normal and we're inclusive and we're we're sympathetic and empathetic to people's emotions. But what they don't factor in is okay, hang on, who's going to pay for all these social services that you're coming up with? For example, ready? Biden himself has said, hey, 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 I'm not the most progressive guy out there on some things. Yet you'll see Bernie or AOC saying, yes, Joe Biden will go down in history as the most progressive president <laughs> in United States history. So there are times a charm. According to Bernie... According to AOC and other people, they're pretty much saying like, nah, we're going to make this motherfucker progressive, right? So we don't know how he's going to be. What do you guys predict will happen as these caravans are starting to get ready for the winter to go away so it's not so cold? And they're already thinking, hey, man, uh, the Democrats won. Basically, the left, it's the left party they're in. This Biden guy seems like he's going to be really nice to us. Uh, do you think that the caravans are going to bum rush the way they did Trump? And what do you think Biden is going to do? Is he going to just let everyone in how my raza thinks he's going to do? He's going to let in all the Hondurans and just everybody, just all Central America, everybody from, I don't give a damn where you from. He's so nice to immigrants, even though him and Obama deported more than anybody. Right. right? Um, what do they think is going to happen when these caravans... Now, maybe the news may not cover it as much. That might be a thing. Maybe they won't show you how they got to put some in cages. We don't know if he's going to separate families. We don't know exactly what he's going to do. But that's the thing. It's like, have y'all thought this shit through? So I already got my popcorn ready. Yeah, buddy. I can't wait. Now, the media might not show it, but I guarantee you he's going to have to deport people. There will be a wall. And... He's not going to let in a whole bunch of caravans. No. And y'all going to be sitting there talking about, man, 
we miss Trump. It's going to be Obama 2.0. Let's be real. Like, it's exactly what it's going to be. And if you heard um, his last speech, this was two days ago in Georgia. So, you know, him and Trump, they, they gave these last, like, uh, runoff election speeches. I actually listened to the majority of uh, Biden's because I was just interested in what his message was going to be. And one thing I'll notice right away, you can tell this man got coaching from Obama because he is speaking either there. They got him really drugged up. They got him on some shit. And he's had a lot of coaching because he's talking in that same you know this cadence. That, that cadence it's like ladies and gentlemen you know blah, 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 and he's he's talking in a point to to like make a point like he hadn't said anything about for instance the two thousand dollar stimulus check at all didn't like even pelosi and aoc and bernie were like yeah they're with president trump about more stimulus or whatever forget the fact it got shot down by, by the senate he said if you vote for these democrats in georgia i guarantee the two thousand dollar stimulus basically that was the first time if, he had mentioned it if, if like yeah. uh if you do this for me yes exactly how that work? Yeah, exactly, right? Okay. But that was, I mean, that's it's, it's more like a it's more like a campaign promise, you know? He hadn't said anything about it till then. But it was just the manner that he was speaking. It was like, man, this guy's taking a lot of, like, before he would just kind of ramble, you know? Like, come on, man, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, like, get off my lawn. Yeah, man. but you could more tell. More masks, first hundred days. Dude. We're going to lock it down. Yeah. More masks. Nope. Obama has definitely been in his ear coaching this old man. Mm. You could just tell. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They definitely be having, I know Kamala did. When she, uh, when she was in the primaries, and then she had she got smoked. She, she chunked the deuce, yeah. and then went low key for a little bit, and then came back. You could tell. Um, to go back to the progressive topic that we've been talking about is, and, and I looked it up on Twitter, and it's funny that Jimmy Dores is the first tweet that comes up. What a better example! So he said, "Shame on the House progressives for not fighting for force the vote." So I don't know if you were following force the vote. They had the opportunity to bring Medicare for all to the floor, and basically. It just got shut down, right? He said, what's the point of voting for progressives inside the Democratic Party again? They won't fight. They are selling selling you out and abandoning you. Shame. We are a failed state as a progressive movement. So Jimmy Dores, you know, he calls everybody out, but he's more of the progressive. He doesn't really care for the Democrats or the Republicans and calls himself a progressive, but whatever. Um, that's a good point. Like, Medicare for all. Don't you think every progressive should have signed on to, to make this a, a votable uh, bill? No. No, they didn't. They said, fuck you. We're going to vote Pelosi back in. We're going to keep it as it's going. And we're going to get we're, Trump out. We're going to blame everything on Trump. Yeah. And continue to say things like, what am I saying? Uh, Re-impeach re or he needs to be impeached again. Like, I thought he already lost. Like, why are you pushing that narrative now? The first impeachment didn't even want shit. It didn't even go through. They're like, wait. So he was on the phone with the president of Ukraine saying, hey, man, you know that military aid you need? I kind of need you to look into some things, man. They're, they're saying that this company, Burisma, and these, these Bidens, man, they got some things. Can you look into it for me? And I'll give you this bread. They're like, oh, that's a quid pro quo. And at the time, at the time when that shit was happening, when was that? Was that the end of last year? Uh, Was it? That might have been a year and a half ago. Okay, well, a year and a half ago, I was like, man, what the hell is Trump doing, man? He on the phone with Ukraine and talking about it was a perfect call. And it did sound like a pretty quid pro quo to me. And then you come to find out, bro, he was trying to look into some shit that interests the American people. Yeah. Some actual corruption, you know, with some actual politicians. And yeah, he was getting dirt on a competitor, but it was helping us. It was good for us. I want to bring up, uh, somebody sent this to me. It was a video of um, Biden. I think it was in San Antonio. Uh, of course, it doesn't pull up. You ever go to band video? Uh, where Alex Jones and all that stuff is now. They have all basically all the videos that have been banned on YouTube on there uh, because they obviously are censoring that kind of content. But anyway, this guy calls him out like in the middle of a speech. He's like, you're lying, Joe. You're a liar. Ukraine, you know, blah, blah, blah. Son of a bitch, you got fired. That kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I saw it. It, you uh -huh. did? Uh -huh. Okay. And there's a good amount of people there that were just booing this guy, right? Mm -hmm. that, it, it, in my head, I'm like, okay, do you not know that that's for real? Or are you just going to just rally behind this guy because you're at his you know, little speech rally? Bro, there is a clip. It's uh, Fox News put it out, and I know Fox News be lying. Sure. It was Tucker Carlson. I know Tucker is a paid personality, and he's, you know, he does what he does. Man, it was such a well-put-together clip. I wanted to post it so bad, <laughs> but I know people are already on me like, Chingo's just wanted, he just wants to blame everything on China, and he just thinks Trump is great, and Trump never does nothing wrong. Yeah. I want to post it so bad. It was a, a professor in like Beijing doing a presentation for all these people. And he basically says, it's amazing. He's like, 
uh, from the years, I forget what year, it was like from this year all the way to 2016, China and America were able to resolve all kinds of things. He's like naming, you know, an embassy got bombed and he's just naming a whole bunch of shit. He's like, but in 2016, he's like, Wall Street couldn't fix Trump. Oh, I watched that. Dude, he's, yes. like, he's like, Wall Street couldn't fix Trump. He's like, why do you think they, they all got fixed? Because there was an inner circle of people, yeah, right? He says, we have he says, now I'm going to say something very, very... Uh, I Controversial? Yeah, impactful or mm -hmm. something like that. He's like, we have a lot of people over there at the top. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, ha, 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 ha. They start laughing and right. stuff. He's like, you know, we've done a good job. He says, and the Hunter Biden thing. He's like, yeah, pretty much it's true. He's like, he laid the groundwork. He's like, we have their main guy. And this is an actual professor. They got the... The, the uh, subtitles at the bottom, the interpreter. And right. Tucker Carlson says, we we ran it by two different translators. They both said everything that he's saying is what he's saying and is accurate. And he's basically bragging to his people how they have scientists, professors, media, journalism, really just all the social engineering, just culture, winning the culture war. I know I sound crazy to some people because they're having cognitive dissonance. They're like, what is, what are you saying, Chingo? But straight up, straight up, like they're selling us out. And I, I should post that clip. At least I, post it on your story, maybe, or something. I don't know how much of a, of a splash you want to make. Man, here, <laughs> Rob, hype me up. <laughs> you, there's evidence. I didn't say do anything. But it hey, would... that's really what gets the most engagement, though. Do what it is, you know, and, and I hope it's for the best. Look at this badass TikTok. Talking about how many comments is this? You got a badass TikTok? It's a badass TikTok. You want to talk about it's it? It's only 34. It's all right. It's not like the greatest <laughs> TikTok in the world, but it's only 34 comments. That's why I need to post that China clip as soon as we're done here. And it's just, <sighs> bro, I was sitting there talking to Joseph about China. Yeah. I'm like, man, look, check it out, Joe. This shit is a giant chess game. I was like, if at any point I say anything that sounds crazy, you let me know. I was like, is it a stretch of the imagination that countries like to put their submarines and stuff and kind of in the vicinity just in case, aim them, you know, like, oh, this is our sea that's international waters, but I have a submarine right over here. You ever played a Risk? Mm -mm. You never played a Risk? Risk, no. The world, the game of world domination? <sighs> oh, you would love it. Oh, I need that. I have a Game of Thrones version. Sorry, but keep going. Because oh, you're right. That's what, it's basically, that's describing the game. Like, oh, I need to play that. Yeah. So J Joseph is a millennial. He's vegan. He's like, in his <laughs> he's in his early 20s. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like trying to walk him through this stuff, like, like a big bro. So I'm like, would you agree that sometimes countries put their submarines and their assets and they have military bases and they're kind of checking up on the up and up because that's what this global chess game is about. Who can influence what? Who can get their uh, a friendlier regime in? Who can topple that dictator? Maybe put in one of your guys. Who can you send your CIA over there to train some people? Do they need more weapons over there to fight that thing that they have going? Who's civil war side? If they're having a civil war over here in Syria, whose side are we on? Oh, what's up with that country? Who's helping them? Oh, Russia's helping them? Okay, check this out. What's going on with Cuba? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they're doing. That's their job. We need that. It keeps us safe. So I said, Joe, if you think that they're not, I was like, would you agree that they're putting submarines and stuff in that sea? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, that seems pretty, yeah, it makes sense. I was like, okay, what's up with the moon? You don't think they could be like, yeah, we got a base up here and we, <laughs> it's like, it's like a chess move. I built it up before I got to the moon yeah. part, like, and say something else, see if I don't blow up your satellites. <laughs> But I was telling him the chess game. I was like this. I was like, okay, Joe, um, we have elections every four years. How often does China have theirs? He's like, mm, I couldn't tell you. I was like, for life. It's, it's a life thing. When he's done and he's RIP, then the next guy comes in. Meanwhile, you're playing a chess game every four years. You're having a tag team and switching out. And you're over here. You're from a different political party. This guy, the next guy has a different approach. And there's just all these variables. Meanwhile, China's like... And we're going to put some telecom companies in your country. Boop. And then it's like a hundred year war. And they're like, and we're going to get some social media popping in your country so we can influence trends and spy on your people. Boop. And we're going to have, you know, we're going to bring in fentanyl through the cartels. Boop. And it's just play chess piece. I was like, and we're going to buy all this land in Canada. 
and we're gonna have Swalwell sleeping with Fang Fang, and we're gonna influence your NBA, your sports, your Hollywood, boop, and we're gonna make them put this slogan on your basketball court, and we're gonna make y'all do lockdown, you know what I'm saying? And it's like this fucking chessboard where the whole time the other player's like, bro, can y'all fucking back me up here? And it's like, no, you're the bad guy. Division, yeah. division, division, hate, hate, hate. And he's like, I'm trying to help us with this fucking chess game we got going. Y'all too busy hoaxing me every time I step out the house. It's really weird that they, they have him painted as this guy that like is just the, the worst thing that ever happened to America. And it... Ironic. Ironic, because, I mean, even if you are of the lowest, dumbest kind of cognitive ability, you can't possibly think that this guy is anti-america right at the very least he's not anti-america clearly he's pro-america america first and the people that are opposed to him i don't know that they are opposed to what he's saying like that it's really so focused on the character himself the personality how the he talks tweets. yeah the tweets how the he tweets. said it he sounded mean when he said that right and i wanted to bring this up earlier like how did you feel when you know he was you know when he started tweeting and really started to take off as as our president a lot of people were like, oh, he doesn't, he's not very presidential. I even heard Rogan recently talking to somebody about how Obama won at that. He was the guy that won at like talking and doing, you know, the speeches and all that for that reason. He was very, I don't know, I guess he was articulate and he was very, he's a good performer. Persuasive. Very persuasive, but in that really monotone, like really, I don't know what way it is. And where you have Trump and he's a fucking gorilla that just comes running at you you know, guerrilla warfare style and to get his points out and whatever. Did you have any problem with that? Like that he wasn't very presidential speaking? <clears throat> well, like I said, in the beginning, I had Trump derangement syndrome. Um, I was very upset about the, what I thought I heard, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I hated his guts. I didn't like him. And I also believed everything CNN told me at the time. Yeah. So for everybody that hates me for voting for him, I understand you also have TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. You also believe he's the racist, not Biden. You also believe he's an orange man Hitler. So I can see why you hate Chingo Bling now and you delusion and you hallucinate and think that I'm the sellout and that I don't love my people and I'm, I'm denouncing my rasa. I, I totally get it. But no, you know, once I fucking snapped out of the hypnotism and what the media was, I was doing... Then, you know, it was no longer like, man, it went from like, dude, Jimmy Kimmel has a point, you know, <laughs> he's a funny comedian and Trump's bad. <laughs> and then it went to like, ah, man, these motherfuckers are lame and corny. Now I understand the other side of, of what really happened. They cut out some shit. They put words in his mouth. They they said it was bleach. They said it was the Nazis. They said he called veterans losers, and there were no fucking witnesses. Everybody that was with him that day said it didn't happen, and so on. And it's like, oh, it's just a little pattern. How do people like Trevor Noah still have a job, you know? You know, with everything we're learning about gender. <laughs> man, Trevor, come on, man. I used to like Trevor Noah. I, I did too. I had his audio book about his life and shit, how he was a little kid growing up in apartheid South Africa. And, yeah. And his parents were a mixed, you know, mixed couple, blah, 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 growing up biracial in, in South Africa. I thought it was a cool story. But then he's just shitting on America every day on this fucking bullshit comedy channel. And it, then it just feels like a letdown. It's yeah. like, bro, man. It, and that's the danger when you when you dabble in politics. Some people who feel you're too one-sided, they're just instantly going to keep a closed mind to you. Um, but for those that have been listening and do give us the benefit of the doubt, y'all, like I've said it before, like I posted the clip where I was like, we're not trying to be a cheerleader for any particular Political party or politician. They're like, yeah, right. That's why Trump can do no harm in your eyes. That's and why I purposely started that clip with that little part so that people got that right away. And that's, go ahead. That's what it ensued right after that. Yeah, well, to, to reiterate, I mean, that was a good call on your part. To put that out there. Put it on YouTube. Let it spread. Let that be the preface, uh, you know, the preface to the other shit, which is let's nerd out about this global chess game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like when I talk about things like persuasion and like they got the public hypnotized, the word hypnotized sounds crazy, but this is what I picture. What I picture is like once Trump is out and they and the news, the news shifts 
to other subjects and it's not just about him all day, I think people are going to do this. They're going to like, oh, well, what, ha what happened? And that little like black and white swirl, the woo, 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 it finally stopped. And, and I literally, I don't know if, maybe everyone listening, y'all probably already see through a lot of the bullshit, so this might not be for y'all. But if you're not really sold on Trump or the right or Republicans or anything, See if, as the media shifts and the media narrative changes, if you're going to be like, oh, huh, like a Scooby-Doo commercial. Yeah. Like, oh, man, who did this to us? The media did. And then they're going to be like, rut row. Rut row. Yeah. But the media literally has the power to, I, I don't want to use the words, mm -hmm. rig, mm -hmm. but they can shift yeah. perspective. They can tell you what to focus on. They can cut things out. They can use words like uh, pressured. The Georgia, can say again, uh, caught on tape, leaked audio. And it's like, come on now. That's that's about as credible as Chingo Bling denounces La Raza. <laughs> Chingo Bling is a coconut. Chingo Bling is a sellout. There's a part of me that, and again, it's not over till it's over. We have literally in the next 48 hours, a lot of things are going to transpire. And then in another two weeks, we're going to really see the end of this election cycle. 20th, it's over at, on that day, right? So let's just say that in a in a the world that we're living in, Biden comes in, Trump is out. I am looking forward to what you just talked about. How is this media shift going to take place? Is it going to be this awakening for the people that have had this Trump derangement syndrome? Or is it going to be so business as usual that the divide amongst the country continues to, to grow? Well, how, how was it during the Obama days? What was the media... I mean, you had Black Lives Matter started during that, right? And then you had, wasn't it the tail end or the uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street? You know, well, Occupy Wall Street stopped as soon as Obama went in. To, if I'm not mistaken, mm. yeah, I, I kind of like what happened now, right? What happened to all the protests? Exactly. Uh, so I don't know, man. There was still not, there was still a division, but there wasn't uh, a push for. All of the, let's just, say, for instance, throwing examples, rapid fire, the gender stuff, the, the you know, the separating of, of you know, uh, different classes and different neighborhoods and the school talk and the defund the police and the Black Lives Matter, like hardcore everywhere. Our sports weren't intertwined in this yet. It's just really weird. Like everything's, there's really this huge gap in between a lot of the country. I think it's either going to get better. Obviously, it's only going to get better, get worse, but I don't see it getting that much better. Well, you know what? Again, excellent excellent point because we get to speculate and predict based on all these based on the filters that we're going to view yeah. so let so let me give you my official thing um obviously fox is still going to be anti-biden mm -hmm. that's not going to change i'm sure they were anti-obama back then cnn at&t is either going to sell off cnn and there's no telling where what their future is or b they start to pick on Biden too. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise it's too boring. It's like, we need a bad guy. Um, first of all, how long is Biden going to last up until he passed the baton to Kamala? And then we got to be like President Harris. Oof, um, what a dark day in history that would be. Yeah. Je ne sais, je ne sais pas. Um, so let me give you my prediction. In terms of division in the country, I think my my based on my logic i think the media is going to make it look rosy i think they're going to like all this covid talk is suddenly going to be like oh remember those flu deaths that dropped to zero they're back so we have less covid deaths now because you know we lost 50,000 people again to the flu or something right uh i think they're going to just try to make it seem kumbaya mm. like the protests have already gone away um once mr biden gets in there i think they're probably that's a tough one man because yeah. i just i just contradicted myself yeah i just said cnn's gonna turn on them but at the same time they're gonna make everything seem rosy yeah so i'm fucking stumped <laughs> uh yeah i had a point i wanted to make about it but i can't remember what it was it's it's you have okay i, I can't say it any other way other than it's going to continue to be divided that was my prediction also in the previous episode i think i said it on the patreon exclusive uh 
2021 is just going to be more of a repeat of 2020, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, there's too much of a divide to recoup or to, to repair in 12 months. Like, there's just no way. And then, and we haven't even touched on it at all right now, during this episode, but you still have the fact that states themselves are crumbling. You have businesses that are closing and will never open again. You have people that have no homes. You have, or Mighty Soul talked about it, the um, the working homeless, right? Isn't that mm. the phrase that's being used right now? People that had, have a job but don't have enough... Um, to make ends meet, to have a home. They're living in shelters and shit like that. That's not even, I mean, that's what we really should be focusing on as communities, but we can't help but but kind of pay attention to what the fuck's going to happen with this presidency and the Senate and Mitch McConnell's a son of a you know bitch that didn't vote for these $2,000 checks as a Republican and blah, blah, blah. So we're going to have plenty to cover on and a lot of discussion to have. I'm, I'm sure the CCP got some people on both sides. Oh, yeah. But obviously they control one party in particular, but they probably got a whole bunch of Republicans too. Yeah, you don't have two million people around the world and not some of them are in power in the greatest country, the baddest bitch ever. Yeah, blackmailing, yeah. investigating. So let me revise my prediction. All right. Now, based on... The idea that leftist, extreme, communist type people are trying to do what they do and keep trying to bring down the baddest bitch. Mm -hmm. Then maybe things will just go down a darker road Mm -hmm. of more lockdowns, more mandates, more bigger government, more taxes, more jobs being shipped overseas and back to basically undoing a lot of the stuff that Trump help put together like get rid of the nafta and come up with a new trade thing you know because they got that we're in the middle of all these trade wars with all these people because we're trying to bring back the jobs get a better a a less shitty end of the stick for the for the u.s you know what i'm saying for our economy being more of a nationalist so then i guess my argument is the extreme left who are basically communists in disguise are going to take advantage of the pandemic further probably run some states further into the ground let's keep an eye on what happens to arizona now that it's blue let's see what happens in georgia whether it's going to be red or blue look at let's peep california and see what goes on with their economy and let's look at florida that's a red 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 state the governor i think got it wide open yeah so even though they have cases how does california have more yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. Florida economy is booming. I, I actually wanted to make that point that I think some of the or a lot of the news is going to turn into these divided states, you know, like all the red and blue states. Like they're really going to hyper focus on the states that are handling, let's just say, COVID or whatever in a certain way. Uh, homelessness or um, uh, fucking protests if they still happen. You know, I don't know. But I wanted to bring up. Did you see the DeSantis uh, battles a CNN reporter video on COVID? DeSantis battles a CNN, CNN reporter, reporter no. on the rollout. I'm going to pull up a video. I saw one, and hopefully this is the same one. It's uh, bu- bu- bu. because, man, she was uh, she was being a little rude, a little aggressive on trying to get her, her question out there, and he just kind of shut it down at the end. Man, that boy need to run for president. That's what people were saying in the comments. Sorry, guys, Wi-Fi. Let me, uh, is he Cuban, DeSantis? That's a good question. I don't know. DeSan- that is DeSantis, right? Yeah. Shout out all my Cubans. Get what I said it. <laughs> I got people in Miami, you heard me. Yeah, we should uh we should hopefully have Masvidal on the podcast sometime in the near oh, future. Yeah, man. Street Jesus. The champ. The champ champ. The resurrection continues. Ah oh, damn, this isn't the video I want. This is actually a video of her. Well, maybe they'll show it. Let me see. On this earlier today, tell us about the exchange you had. No, I'm gonna pull up the actual exchange because I don't want the reporter talking about the exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they assign an opinion to you. Exactly. Uh, I feel it is the biggest scandal since Watergate, and this <laughs> is this further proves that they want to be dictators. But they, that's a, that's a good example of a, of a state, though, to keep you know everyone's gonna keep their eyes on. Look at Florida. Look at California, and keep telling yourself that political party don't matter. Republican versus Democrat. It's the same shit, Chingo. Both wings are the same bird. Yeah, right. That people post that a lot. Uh, I mean, I get it to to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. However, in this case, <laughs> there are some differences. It's a lot of differences. We got to be able to oh, hear this sweet. It's on with these fucking ads, man. YouTube's getting real comfy with putting the two ads in front of videos before you watch anything now the, these days. The double ad from the jump. That's us. Yeah, they pimping hard over there. Let's see. 
You gonna play for me? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna post that Chinese professor. Out of the vaccine that we've seen, phone lines jammed, websites crashed. There's a lot of demand. And I mean, also, I think at the I, end of the I, day, we, excuse me, excuse me. If I could, you just said what has gone wrong, so I'm answering the question. If I could complete the question, though. So are you gonna give a speech, or are you gonna answer, ask a question? With all due respect, Governor, you ask the question, to, I'm gonna I'm answer to it. Finish my you're question. not. No, you're you're you're. Given a speech, you asked a question. I am trying to ask you the. You're going to ask how many questions? You get three. They only got one question. Why do you get three? With all due respect, Governor, I'm just asking if I could finish my question. You didn't. You my, finished the question. I did not. My full question is: What went wrong with the rollout of the vaccine when we've seen phone lines jammed, websites so you're crashing? So you repeating your question. To complete it for you, Governor, we've seen websites crash and also senior citizens waiting overnight for the vaccine where was that at we've seen it in duval broward orange and lee county and why was like in lee why did that happen did you investigate that's, why that's my question to you governor you're the governor of the state i'm not the governor of the state okay but you didn't investigate why that how like in lee county why, why was there a big line did you did you investigate why could you tell us why? Because we, we distributed vaccine to hospitals, and, and the hospital said, first come, first serve. If you show up, we'll do it. So they didn't use a registration system. There wasn't anything that was done, and there's a lot of demand for it. So people are going to want to so go ahead and, uh, no and get it. So there was no plan then from the state to make sure that senior citizens didn't wait outside overnight? So the state is not dictating to hospitals how, we're not dictating to Carlos Magoya how he runs his operations here. Fuck, they, can't, they cut out the very end of it. Damn you, the independent. He said, uh, the, the state can't control the way the hospital organizes. You don't think that medical staff has a better process than the, a big state could ever have? The government's not supposed to run the hospitals. They're doing it. So that, And they cut that fucking piece out. God damn it. But well, that was a good point, though. But yeah. the See, he's already up on game. It, it, it's a CNN reporter. So you already know they're not being friendly. Now, let's let's rewind when Trump told uh, Jorge Ramos, go back to Univision, go back, <laughs> go back to Univision. I know I was butthurt. I was like, man, <laughs> why the fuck it got to be Univision, Trump? Why the fuck? You said, man, come on, man, Jorge Ramos, that's a national treasure, bro. You don't, you don't handle Jorge Ramos like that. Go back to Univision, <laughs> go back to it. And it's like, it sounded like he wanted to say, go back to where you came from. <laughs> I know this is all code, but when you already know this motherfucker has it out for me, yeah. And they're going to give us bullshit speech where they trying to inject their own answer into the fucking question. Like we've seen, can you tell us what went wrong, governor? <laughs> Even though we've seen uh, long lines, uh, da -da 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 -da, the phone was jammed, didn't nobody answer, uh, the callbacks was fucked up. You ain't just, bitch, what's your question, ho? <laughs> because, and like he said, you're supposed to be the journalist. Yeah. Did you? Why? Tell me why. You tell me why it was people waiting out there. See, that's why I can't run. I can't run for no public <laughs> office. I know, right? People were like, "Jingo for mayor," Fuck and all no. this. Like, oh, bro, hell no. I have you on a fucking on a on a spike real quick for talking like that. And don't let me be president either, because I'd be like, "Look, man, the aliens I already know. I seen all the documents. I saw somebody post that uh, Trump's going on a tirade that he's going to declassify everything. Aliens, JFK, the whole nine. I'm like, what? Let's bro, do it. Bro, have you seen what this Lynn Wood man was talking about? I haven't been keeping up with his tweets, but he's putting everybody on notice. Bro, did you see the one where he said, he basically said, there is this, <coughs> there's a giant blackmailing scheme going on involving children. Basically, he said, he said, uh, Supreme Court Justice John Roberts is one of them. He said, this is what they do. Oh, yeah. He said they present them with a child and a gun and a video camera and a video camera. And he said they make the person they blackmail and they're going to catch on tape. They make them do nasty stuff with the kid. And then they make them supposedly, allegedly shoot the kid on camera. And now it's like, okay, now you're going to do everything we want you to do because we got you on tape doing two fucked up things to kids. And uh, it sounds outrageous, but he's a defamation lawyer. And he, it was crazy. I was reading the tweets like, what the fuck? Because he's a credible source. Yeah. However, it's kind of like, bro, you got to show some proof, man. You can't just be throwing shit out there like that. But it was fascinating how he was saying it was the lizard squad that shit was trending on Twitter. It was a lizard squad and there are these hackers and they got they got the whole database from the blackmailers where they kept 
the files of presidents and priests and all these politicians and people that they were, you know, blackmailing. And um, he said, he was, there's a clip of him on YouTube. He's like, yeah. He's like, Epstein? He's like, y'all think he's dead? He's like, nah. He's like, Epstein ain't dead. He's like, they want y'all to think yeah, so, either uh, they killed him or he killed himself. He's like, but the motherfucker ain't dead. And he's like, I'm a defamation lawyer. He, I think he's helping Kyle Rittenhouse. And he's he's the one that helped um, the uh, Covington kid get $800 million mm-hmm, from of, CNN. From CNN. So he said, I'm a defamation lawyer. Anything I say is backed by truth. Yeah. He said, because if they want to sue me for defamation, they got to go through a process called discovery. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to discover the truth. He's like, that's why ain't nobody finna sue me. Ain't nobody finna say shit. He says... He says the he says this is part of the Kraken. Yeah, dude, I, I did see. So I couldn't keep up with it because he was going on. It I was should, a I should drop a mixtape called the Kraken. That's hilarious. Or sell some tamales. Be like, what's in that one, man? Oh, these are the Kraken. These are Kraken. You <laughs> get your own risk. <laughs> these are Kraken. <laughs> uh, he was also talking about or somebody. He would so judge uh, on the Supreme Court. Judge Roberts was the last judge that I think Bush put in. So you have like Bush, and then you got obviously Kavanaugh and uh, Amy Coney Barrett, and then you have um, Black Guy. The, K- Kavanaugh the got in either way. Kavanaugh, yeah, they let him in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He saw all that Me Too shit. It didn't stick. It was just theater. Theater. defamation of character, basically, more and theater. yeah, more political theater. But that's why a lot of people were like, uh, you know, Roberts isn't even though he was one, like a Bush appointed judge, isn't necessarily going to help with this if it goes to the Supreme Court. And then Lynn Wood starts, you know, coming out with all that, and it's like, oh, well, maybe they're right. <laughs> Again, straight well, out of a movie. Bro, it is. Lynn Wood, he even said, um, he's like, oh, hey, Trump, Pence ain't your home. He's, that's not your homeboy. That's going to be interesting to see because I'm hearing both sides of the story and I, I just, we got to wait and see. He was he he was saying, he says, he says, even if y'all try to come get me, he's like, someone else already has the crypto key to unlock the files that are somewhere else and, and there's backups. And, he, and then he said, one of the dudes from the Lizard Squad they suicided him and the other ones got thrown in jail and he's like they stumbled on this treasure trove and and i don't know man but i might have to make a hot sauce called the kraken uh i could have sworn trump oh he's tweeting right now actually antifa is a terrorist organization stay out of washington law enforcement is watching you closely oh speaking of so wait two things one i think t- uh, pence had tweeted we know uh, oh, we know of all the fraud uh you know i'm behind president trump Something to that effect. Mm. He had never he hadn't said anything like that. I even saw people pointing out that um, when Trump posts like a letter or a screenshot of a letter like from the White House, it used to be signed like President Trump and Vice President Pence, and now they were just being signed President Trump without Pence's name. Like, oh, he's like backstepping off of Trump, right? But then he says shit like that. You're like, okay, does he have his back? I don't know. And then Lynn Wood was talking real bad about Mike Pence. He was saying, he's like, why y'all think his state was the... Uh, the main state for child trafficking or some shit. And it's like, wait a minute, Lynn. wait a minute, Lynn Wood. You can't just throw out allegations like that. Sue me. With he some said, sue me. With some motherfucking receipts. You had the, uh, who is it? The Missouri state representative, uh, Senator. What's his name? What's his name? I got it up on one of these stories. Uh, Senator Howley, who his Antifa like stormed his house yesterday and was, Basically, like, uh, you don't have the right to change these, you know, votes because he's going to contest the election, he said. Holly, is he in the wheelchair? No. No, okay. No, the but real that, young guy. The real young, yeah. Um, I forgot his name. What the fuck? I thought that was Holly. No, Josh Holly is, uh, he's another white guy from Missouri. Let's see if this video But he's plays. not the young dude? Not the young guy in the wheelchair. I'll pull him up, too. Let's see if this plays. Oh, man, they got, somebody actually put the entire video up. This is at the senator's house with his family and his kids. Because of what? Because of what? At what point do you hear? That's what they were saying. Like, that's why you have the Second Amendment. And he, I mean, the senator said that they tried to force themselves in the door. At that point, okay, that's when you would hear the pow pow. I can't find the the part, but. You hear the pow pow before you even get to the door. Right. A 50 minute long video of the events posted on YouTube by a group titled Vigil for Democracy. So they're calling it a vigil, not a violent protest, which is what it was. Bitch, you better take that vigil from off my motherfucking street. Yeah. Senator Josh Halley rips Antifa scumbags who threatened his home with only his wife and newborn daughter inside. The protesters called it a peaceful vigil. I would have been like, the baby got a gun too. <laughs> she, and she got good aim. What'd it do? That's nuts, man. 
But yeah. Wow. So a group of leftist protesters showed up in Missouri Republican Senator Josh Halley's Washington, D.C. area home do, Monday. Do they identify as leftists or they're just being labeled leftists? I mean, this is what every outlet has, has been <clears throat> okay. calling it. I mean, they sound leftists. I'm just curious if they know they're fucking leftists. Right. Um, I mean, when your signs man. say stuff like you don't have the votes or you can't overturn yeah. this or something like that. Man, I don't know where the fuck Lynn Wood is going with this shit. But... um. You know what's crazy? You know how how you and I can clearly see mm -hmm. Antifa is on some fuck shit. Yeah. Right? To us, it's like obvious. It's like they're the ones tearing up businesses and fucking shit up, doing a whole bunch of chaos and anarchy and division and fuck shit. All these expenses. Well, there's people that argue with me on Twitter that are like, yeah, right. You can't prove Antifa did anything. Stop saying. Depp's heart is yeah, the ad <laughs> They're always like, stop saying that it's BLM and Antifa doing this, that, causing property damage. It's not true. And they'll be like, it's the Proud Boys that are... And I'm like, look, the Proud Boys fucking up too because they want to roll up under one name, almost like a crew. And then if one motherfucker does some shit, you're making the whole crew look bad. So in essence, yeah, the Proud Boys, they fucking up the game because they're coming in too aggressive and it's making, it's making the conservative side look... Like, it just makes it easy for the media to be like, and there you have it, folks. <laughs> there you have it. He the was in smoking a, gun. He was in the news yesterday, right? The leader of the Proud Boys, he got uh, he got arrested as soon as he landed in D.C. Because they were like, no, we know what you're here for. Or, well, but no, they, they were, so police arrest Proud Boys leader over, because he burned, allegedly burned the Black Lives Matter flag. So they arrested him. You're not allowed to. Bruh, to these be. people are burning the United States flag, stomping on it, burning it, and they're just letting it happen. And apparently this guy lands, and they, the leader of the far-right group was charged with destruction of property for allegedly stealing and burning the BLM banner. That's what it was. The arrest comes days ahead and, of the pro-Trump rally. he's not a white boy, right? No, what, what he's like he? Cuban or something, isn't he? I think. So maybe he was mad at the organization. But I heard another, I, I read another article where he, he took the fall for it, allegedly. So... He may or may not have done it. Somebody else did it. He just took the fall. I don't know. So it's more of a you damage someone's private property. Well, type it was. Of it was. Yeah, it was at a. I think it's a misdemeanor for destruction. It was at a church supposedly during a. Uh, let me see. Terry Terrio's his name. Terrio and others allegedly stole and burned a Black Lives Matter banner from a church during violent protest in December. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, the 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 Proud Jesus. Boys, man, they need to cool out because. They're becoming an easy argument mm -hmm. for people like people like me who are on there trying to warn people about how the media is full of shit and how some of these other countries don't really like us. And they're we're actively like we're actively, uh, you know, yeah. it's going down. Yeah. You just don't see it. But we at each other's neck It's going down. The, and, and and then they hit me back with these little comebacks of, oh, yeah, well, stop blaming everything on Antifa, Chingo. It's the Proud Boys burning everything. And this and that. Yeah. And it's like, bitch, you're going to send me this, send me this one bullshit-ass link. <laughs> Meanwhile, Antifa's full of shit. We don't know who's been funding them. What the hell that's about? I had someone send me a video. And this is like, this is where like it goes into Patreon exclusives, deep rabbit hole. But it was a guy that was like, look, uh, we've got a lot of interesting things coming, coming in the next few days. Um, I suggest that people... Go to the bank. The thing was, if the internet, he, he's like, God, and this shit's just like super full foil, right? Uh, don't be surprised if the grid goes down, if the internet goes down, if you can't access, um, you know, YouTube or Twitter or Instagram to see what goes on during the Senate runoff race and when the, uh, when the polls close and then the results start coming out. Uh, if the grid goes down or the internet goes down at all, expect to not be able to access your bank account. So maybe take some money out, have some cash on hand, be home. And I was like, God, in my head, I'm like, I mean, it's possible. I don't think it will happen, but at this well, point. Well, look at, look at Venezuela. I'm not saying what this person is talking about is the single switch that's going to turn America into Venezuela. But it's happened many, 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 many times where, for example, somebody in Zimbabwe before a regime change might have two hundred thousand dollars in the bank and the next day that shit ain't worth nothing yeah and it's like oh hey good morning tuesday afternoon and you're broke <laughs> or or let somebody somebody in venezuela they might be like you see these carrots right here i have three carrots you see all these stacks of money all this paper right here that's how much these carrots cost right now because the money ain't worth shit it's worth more as paper than it is as currency 
and everything is price regulated. So literally in Venezuela right now, they'll show you a stack of carrots and then some fucking Instagram. You know how the Instagram rappers have like, hello, yeah. you got like a big arm foot, like, like a boom box bands. of cash. Yeah. yeah. You know, bands, what it do? Sass. And it's like, and you could buy those carrots now. So it, you know, it's probable, man. I, I don't know what it would take for it to be like, like, is it as simple as a hack? a grid going down and all of a sudden you can't access your money. Maybe only because most money is digital. Yeah. Most money is just commas and zeros and shit in a computer. And you know, Rob gives Chingo a hundred dollars where they subtract a hundred from his computer and they plus a hundred to my computer. Yeah. Kind of like Bitcoin. And that's it. He didn't have to go physically pull the paper out and hand me the paper. And then I go and put it in a bank. So because it is mostly digital, it's kind of vulnerable, even though the uh, what is it, FDIC insures up to what a hundred thousand or whatever. That's that might that question. I've been stumped several times on this episode, mm -hmm. and that might be one of them. It's kind of like, no, it's, you got to have a couple things happen for for some crazy, yeah, for some crazy fucking chaotic uh, Mad Max shit. You're right, you, you do, but I leave all doors open for possibility, right? Rob's going to the bank right after this. 100%. Um, I don't know if we mentioned earlier, maybe before we started recording, uh, the, Ver the Project Veritas tapes, where they had leaked out how there was one particular address. I think we said it at the beginning of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, 201 Washington. Yeah. yeah. They were talking about thousands of people have this address to where, and I think one of them, or maybe that one was a, was it not a, a, a nonprofit? Am I mistaken? Was that it? Was like a shelter. Yeah. And it, one of the dudes said that um, one day he went into work and it was like, thousands and the mail right piles of all this uh voter registration info mm -hmm. that arrived at that address because people used it mm -hmm. and that the main lady i forget her name was like you need to get rid of all of that right now yeah and the guy was like it was you know hun not hundreds but thousands you know not tens of thousands maybe but thousands of people and was like okay it's a lot of votes that's a lot of votes when you consider again bush v gore was on just 500 votes to decide the presidency right <laughs> like come on a any amount like if you see a thousand or a couple thousand and you want to still say that that's not going to swing an election, you're out of your goddamn mind. I mean, it's it's kind of a cheating contest, and uh, we're just trying to see who won this cheating contest. Yeah, who's the best cheater? You know, like Stone Cold Steve Austin said, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, and <laughs> and meanwhile, they're trying to take this hour-long Trump phone call of him whining and complaining, trying to get some customer service. He, <laughs> he, he couldn't even get them to be polite, much less be an authoritative uh, mob boss dictator. Right. Bro, he couldn't even get respect. He couldn't even get customer service. So whatever mob boss dictator y'all fucking made up, you hallucinated it. If you listen to the call, there is nothing of, uh, check this out. I need you to find, you know, a way I can win. It was more like, hey man, this vote's missing <laughs> and what's going on? And I don't know what you're talking about, President. It was just a bunch of wine, like grievances. And the other person on the other side of the desk was like, mm, yeah, well, the end of the line is over there, bro. Take a number. Yeah, and these Project Video, the Project Veritas videos have, you know, the, the people's names and what part of the organization they are, like election, you know, chief, you know, customer service fucking person. And then James O'Keefe tweeted that update, the central OAC has completely removed their staff biographies page from their website. Now it's just a error... A, uh, a 404 not found error. When which, he, which website? The Georgia, um, what is it? I guess their government voter staff page. Mm. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Again, man. it could just be coincidence, but let's be real. I don't know, man. All I know is that, you know, I'm pro capitalism. I like a strong economy. I like a strong military, strong defense, you know, a whole bunch of government. Uh, in people's business, telling people what to do. I think I'm borderline libertarian, but I haven't done all my research. What I'm not for is what a lot of these folks on the left are doing. And I really don't know how you can get cajoled into that lane. Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. When we were young, mm -hmm. especially especially going in school, you know, just being a young kid in school. And um, I mean, think about it, man. How cool was it for me to feel militant and to blame everything on the system and yeah. the man. That was easy for me to do. That was super easy. Oh, I get it. I'm from the hood. I'm brown. And it's somebody else's fault that I'm not balling. 
you know, it's an easy game to play. It's like, yeah, man, inclusion and equality. And, you know, we, we need, hey, man, stop being mean to those people. You know, yeah. leave them alone. But what people don't realize is, like, Trump was pretty pro-gay. He did a lot of shit for the black community. He was working on some shit for us with uh, when Goya came through and mm-hmm. they were doing his Hispanic thing. And then y'all made a big fucking deal because the CEO of Goya, shout out Babu Nanwe, he said some fly shit about Trump and everyone's like, oh my God, throw away your beans because these stupid fucking Hollywood motherfuckers be on Twitter. Uh, listen, Milano type motherfuckers. And it's like, man, do y'all not see how we just getting fucking fucked over? Like, we're being super nice to countries that hate us. Meanwhile, we just want to focus on all the things that, that makes America bad and all this imaginary division and racism and everywhere you look is victims and everywhere you look is, is racism and everywhere you look is white supremacy. Don't you tell me Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's white supremacy because not everybody believes. And it's like, all right, can we make it great again? Because I feel like the shit used to be great. Right. And now we're over here fucking, you can't say shit. They want to cancel some shit. They try to cancel Goya, couldn't do that. And it's like, get your head out your ass already, man. Alyssa Milano, speaking of, man. She's a hypocrite. Such a, When she was like, you know, believe all women kind of thing until it came to Biden's until, allegations. Right up until. Silent. She's like, mm, yeah, well, all women except for her. Yeah. And there's so many women on the left that are like her. And there's a whole lot of women uh, um, women out there that are, um, you know, closet Republicans. And did you see the ad? Who, who, who Did you send it? Okay, Mighty Soul showed it to me. It's really well done. I'm going to have her send it to you. But I'll, I'll paraphrase. The chick voting? Yeah. Oh, did you see that one? Keep it our little secret? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, who, did, did you send that to us? No. I, I sent it to her a long time ago, but she sent it last night. So y'all go look it up, or maybe we'll put it on the What Did He Said um, Instagram. For sure. So it's basically... Uh, a commercial for Republicans, I'm assuming. And they're obviously trying to target women. Mm -hmm. They show a lady, her lips don't move at all, but you hear the voiceover. So you're hearing her inner thoughts. Yeah. She's walking in to vote. She looks very suburban, you know, like she cares about her family and she just wants to be a good mom, good wife. She's walking in to vote and you hear her inner thoughts saying, hmm, there's a lot of violence and protests going on out there. I really don't want that in my community. Like, yeah. I want a safe community. And it's like, I want my kids to be able to grow up in a world where blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, what about jobs? And she says, my husband works in manufacturing. And if that goes overseas too, I don't know what we'll do. And then she's like, and what's up with all these lockdowns? I mean, for a minute there, it got scary. We were thinking, how are we going to put food on a table? She's like, and that's why I'm voting I'm voting, you know, red. Yeah. Keep it our little secret. She walked secret. out of her purse like she just took a dump. <laughs> like, it was like a tampon commercial the way she said. She was like, mm-hmm. And she clicked the little box, and then she threw a purse out. She walked, and she gave the wink to the camera like, that's our little secret. And it's like, damn, bitch, did you just tear up that toilet? <laughs> like, it was like a poopery commercial. Hey, either way, she was a dish. She was a nice, she was a looker. Hey, Rob remembers everything. 100%. He ain't forget that part. Not at all. She had heels with jeans on. Something about that's a little it's sexy. It's something about heels with the jeans, ladies and gentlemen. It is. You heard it here first. Hey, this is controversial, man. It's <laughs> episode 16. This is for everybody. But if you want to be a patron, make sure you hit us up, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. And um, hopefully we inspire you to pay attention to the world around you differently. Kind of like, hey, what's in it for that guy? Or, hey, you know, why are they... Why are they, before I even get to watch the clip, why are they trying to make it seem like somebody was caught on tape and it's leaked and it's a further shows dictator tendencies and blah, blah, blah. So we just want y'all to be up on game. Um, how are we doing on time? Hour and 20. Okay. Well, hey, I, this is a good way to wrap it up. Yeah. Um, tune in for the next one. Let's see what happens in Georgia. Uh, we're going to be dropping an episode 17 real, real soon. Uh, we have somewhat of a schedule going on. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? You want to tell them when they drop? Or? Uh, yeah. So right now, if, if it changes, I mean, we'll either record right now Tuesdays, drops on Wednesday. Patreon is records Thursday, drop it on Friday. Perfect. So as long as your schedule is cool with that. Yes. If we got to do it a day before, or whatever, we we can. I'm. Hey man, this is a commitment. I would love to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
I don't foresee any curveballs coming at me from Mighty Soul saying, hey, <laughs> hey, we got to go do this instead. She's on her grind as well. If people want to listen to her lounge podcast. That's right. She just recorded an episode with uh, Kelly Jean. Shout out to Kelly Jean uh, and Lucky Luciano. So uh, that's going to be coming real soon on Mighty Soul's podcast, her lounge podcast. It's almost like we got a network going, man. Yeah, we do. You know, we might need a podcast from Rob pretty soon. But um, and they, then you're gonna be out of town. You're gonna be you got performance. You got shows. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, I, shit. I should have said at the beginning, January 14th and the 15th, College Station, Texas, stand up comedy show, Chingo and Friends. Uh, we got Jesse Payton on there, Israel Garcia on there. College Station, January 14th and the 15th, and then more dates to come in ChingoBling.com. Sauce. Thank you guys. Y'all take care and talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>